Hi, this is Dawn of Stamp Till Dawn, and today I'm here participating in the Twisted Sister YouTube Hop. And that is several close to my heart makers have gotten together and we're showing you unusual ways to use some of the products in our latest catalog release. Today I'm working with the September, October 2021 idea book. And we, some of you who may be familiar, we typically have a Cricut collection that goes with our paper packs. Well, new in this uh, issue, we're offering those as digital images or SVGs. And this means even my silhouette peeps can use them. They show a small sampling of the images here in the idea book, but there are actually quite a few more that are not pictured. The one that I've chosen to work with is not pictured in the idea book, and it is an advent calendar. And as you can see, there's already a little bit of a twist. This doesn't look like your typical Christmas advent calendar. I wanted to point out that because it's an SVG, it doesn't have score lines. So if you cut the image exactly as it were to come off the SVG, you would actually cut out these windows. They would be completely cut out. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna show how I made the twists that I'm about to show you and how to do that in design space. But first, let me kind of tease you with what we've done. So this would be great for some kind of game where they have to pick a window and there's a prize behind it. You could make it a matching game. There's just a lot of different ways that you could use something like this. But let me show you what else you can do. Because it's an SVG, I can adjust the number of windows and adjust the size of what I'm doing. So here I've taken three windows and put it on a slimline card. And then as you open them, there's little sayings behind it. And this is also using our uh, September special, the little gnomes from there, which are super cute. And since I kept adjusting it, now this can be done with a regular Cricut using your scoring tool and um, cutting. So you can do that on your Explorer um, or your Maker. But this next step, then I took it and I used the perforation blade from the maker and I made these cute little cards where you can open it up. So my idea for this is at parties or um, workshops, if somebody spends a certain amount, they can pick a little card and then open it to reveal their prize. Now I can do this at my close to my heart workshops, but I know many of you sell other products. So you could easily adapt this for another business like Sensi or 31. So how cute is that? Super fun. Now I'm going to switch over and show you how to adjust the files in design space. Okay. Now that I've shown you all the cool things that you can do with the advent calendar image, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that in Cricut. Now, most of these items can be done with the Explorer or the Maker, but a couple of items where I use the perforation blade, you need the Maker for it. So I'm going to go to my uploaded images. I've already uploaded the SVGs into my account, and I need to go to View All to see the Advent Calendar. And here it is right here. So I'm going to click on it and insert the image onto my canvas. As you can see, the image comes in with a variety of cuts. It has the 11 and a half inch square, has all of the numbers as well as the windows. Now, because it's an SVG, it can't tell it that there's a score line. So it comes in as a cut line. So if I were to cut it the way it is now, it would cut out every single one of these windows. So the first thing I need to do is I don't wanna work with the numbers so I'm gonna look at my layers panel here and anywhere that there's a group that has numbers, I'm gonna go ahead and hide them. And this just makes it easier for you to deal with what you have there. Now I could also delete them and actually uh, that works better because there's less uh, items on your, on your um, canvas. And so it kind of makes things move a little bit faster. Okay, so all the numbers are hidden, and now I'm going to hide this outer square. So now I'm left with the windows, and I need to adjust the windows so that they score on the one end, so they don't just come completely out. So I will click on each one um, 
actually I have to ungroup first. So I clicked on them. You can tell they're all grouped together. So I'll go ahead and ungroup. And then now I can click on each item here. That got the whole square. And I really just want this edge here. So it looks like I have to ungroup one more time. And there we go. Now I can select the, the edge. So I'm going to go over here to where it says operation and I'm going to change it from basic cut to score. Now I'll need to repeat that for all of the squares. So this gets a little tedious when you're doing this, but taking a few minutes to do it, once you get your main um, item all set, then you can do a lot with it. So I am going to stop talking and I'm going to speed up this portion of my recording and come back to you once I've finished adjusting all of these from a cut line to a score line. Phew. Okay. We are all done with that. And before I make any mistakes and accidentally um, move something where I don't want it, I am going to click and drag to select all of the items on my canvas and group them together. So now if I try to move them, they'll move together. So this is your basic advent. If I come back over here and turn my green square back on, here it is. I undo the eyeball there, open it back up. I can align these items. So what I like to do is I like to click outside of the image and then make sure I go onto the image. Now I have both of them and I'm going to align them centered horizontally and centered vertically. So now they're completely lined back up and I can go ahead and select them both again and attach them. What this will do is it'll make it cut the window and score the window out of this piece. So before I go any further, at this point, I like to save my project. So I'm going to go ahead and save the project and I'm going to save it as scored advent. So that way I know that, and I'm going to put it in my CTMH folder and you have folders if you subscribe to access. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now I've got that basics done. And at this point I can adapt it however I want. So I am going to detach it. And let's just say I only want uh, a four by four. So I'm going to do like a four by four concentration game or something. So I am going to hide this from here. And now I have my image. I'm going to ungroup. And then, so four goes over here and down to here. So I don't need this row at all. So I'm going to delete it. And I don't need this row. So I'll delete those and then quickly group those back together so that I don't mess them up. Bring back my square that's down here. And then I'm going to resize it. So let's kind of make it a little bit smaller till I get it where I want and then again align it center vertically and center horizontally. I don't remember which one I did the first time. <laughs> I think I said one thing and did something else and then I would attach it again. So now this will cut out of a um, smaller square and it's more a smaller size for a small concentration game with like six items on it. So now um, that can all be done with your Explore machines. But if you have a maker, you can take this even one step further. So I am going to detach this. And actually, I haven't saved one like this before. So I am going to save as four by four scored. Okay, now that I've saved it, I am going to do one more thing to it. So I'm going to detach it and I'm going to hide my square. And now I'm going to ungroup my um, windows again, because now I want to use my perforation blade to make those cute little hidden items where you can like make it into a prize or something. So to, now I'm clicking on it and you'll notice there's two places to click. I can click on this edge and that's how I did the score line. But if I click on the next part, it kind of looks like it has a score line, but it really isn't. It's really this L shape right here. And I am going to go change that to uh, 
call. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Sorry. I am on my explore machine. That was a good tip. So right now up here, I've selected explore machine. I need to switch over to my maker in order to have access to the perforation. So now when I click on it and I go up to basic cut, I can have perforate. So I can go through and change all of these to perforate as I did in earlier in the video. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. I am just going to do these four up here at the top. One more. And so now I can get rid of all these left. So we're going to pretend I only needed four that are perforated. And while I'm here, I'm going to show you one more fun thing. So I selected them all. I'm going to group it. I'm going to bring back my square. And I want it to be a rectangle now. So I need to unlock the image so that it can be adjusted, not be a square. It won't be proportionately resized anymore. And I want this to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're just going to eyeball that and say that's correct. At this point, I can now take the square and change this cut to the wavy blade. So um, if you have these blades and you have the maker, what will happen now is you'll put the, oh, you have to attach it too. So I'm going to attach it. I would send this to my maker and first it will score the lines. Then I believe it'll perforate next and then it'll cut the outer um, line as a wavy edge. So as you can see, you can take this one SVG and just keep adapting it to make a variety of projects. I hope that you have fun with our Advent as SVG and that you look at some of the other SVGs that we sell to see what else you can make.